Erica and Sharon are sisters who began their grief journey in 2006 when Erica's 10-year-old son Austin drowned. Together, they participated in a grief education program were so moved by this experience, they studied and became specialists so they could help the brokenhearted find recovery. In 2015, tragedy struck the family once again when Erica's oldest son, Donovan, was killed in a motorcycle accident. Erica and Sharon are committed to sharing their experiences of love, loss, and healing through this podcast. Now your grief specialists, Sharon and Erica. Hi, I'm Sharon. I'm Erica. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you're listening to this podcast, there's a huge probability that your heart may be totally broken. We don't know what you're feeling, but we do know what a broken heart feels like. Isn't that true, Erica? It's absolutely true. And regardless of the cause of your broken heart, it probably doesn't feel good at all just to feel sad and be in pain. So we're hoping that you will get some helpful hints from our stories today. And today we're talking about social media. There's so many rules and regulations that go along with social media and grievers that we really have to get the word out there. You know, it's, it's like a blessing and a curse, I call it, because it's so good to have the option to be able to stay connected with people who don't live close to you and see people when they're getting married and all the beautiful things that happen. But when you have a tragedy, it definitely can be quite a curse to be reminded about painful events in your life. I remember when Austin died, I don't think, and that was in 2006, I don't think social media was such a profound event to me then. Maybe it was. I mean, can you kind of remember that, Erica? I don't remember it being such a big thing. I don't, it, I know I had a Facebook, but I don't remember, and I think back then probably it was still called the Facebook. <laughs> um, I don't think we used it as much as we do now. It was just kind of something we were starting to get into, but not nowhere near what we're doing now. And because I don't think that we've established the politically correct rules for using social media, for one, the griever, but also the supporting staff. So everyone that's around the griever and people that are just finding out, you and I kind of wanted to share and give some rules to our friends just about, hey, here's some things you can do that will help you know what to share and what not to share. So let's go to rule number yeah, one. Yeah, because, I'm you sorry. know, but I was just going to say from the time that Austin passed away in 2006, Till the time Donovan passed away in 2015, everything was totally different in regards to our interactions with social media. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. So rule number one, never allow, you're never allowed to post someone's death on social media platforms until someone from the immediate family has posted it first. This, I think, is yes, the number and that's one important most rule. important rule. Number one most important rule. We know for a fact, Erica, that when Donovan died, from the time that I called you and said Donovan had passed away, till 40 minutes exactly, the first post went up. Yeah, and not by us, not by, not by us. And I actually called and asked them to take that down because we hadn't even told the grandparents yet. And that's what people need to understand is that everyone in the family needs to post I'm mean, everyone in the family needs to be told they need to be told in their certain ways and sometimes there's distance phone calls area and so you need to wait until the immediate family has posted before you post here's the other thing the immediate family may not want to post so please don't post right right there's absolutely a way to convey your sadness and your sentiment without having to post it on social media you know you no, know, you can send, you know, you can text, you can do a phone call, you can talk, you can actually have a real life conversation with someone face to face and talk about how bad you feel about whatever has occurred. You don't have to take it to social media on the very first day. Here's another aspect of that. My daughter, Brittany, went into a coma in 2014. Her husband and myself decided we were not posting it at all while she was doing in the coma. 
Granted, my daughter loves attention and she loves everything to be about Facebook, but we chose not to put it on social media because we had so much going on in our life. We made the decision we didn't want it out there. And everyone respected us and they didn't put it out, thankfully. But sometimes that doesn't happen in families. Some people will just jump the gun and start talking about something that really wasn't their decision to make in the first place. Right. Yeah. And that, so it's like already you're dealing with something very, very scary, you know, Brittany being sick and you're trying to support her the best way you can. You're trying to stay on top of what's going on with her medically and, and make a change. You don't have time to worry about what people are going to say or not say on social media. It's like, that's the last thing you want on your mind is that. Rule number two, think before you post. Many people are finding out for the first time via social media. So be respectful and be kind. Yeah. I, I don't know if this has ever happened to you, Erica, but last year I experienced it, I think for the first time. A very dear friend of mine was very ill and uh, was diagnosed quickly and passed away. And he was a colleague, a past colleague of mine. And I found out on social media. And when I opened the social media and saw that, my heart just dropped. It was a beautiful post to him. But the shock of that, I think will stay with me for a very long time. So one, seeing that, and two, knowing what to post. You need to be kind to everyone that's out there. Right. I mean, I think it's kind of nice, um, like with our situation, someone decided to be the point person. Like they volunteered and they said, okay, I'm going to handle all the information that goes out on social media. So then you have one point of contact and you can have that person, you know, putting things out there in a very um, sensitive way and, and taking that into account that some people will be seeing it for the first time on social media and it is going to be a shock to them. So if they're, if they really think about the wording and how they're, you know, portraying the information that, that really, I think is helpful to the family that has to also experience and go through the other steps of, you know, everything else that comes with loss. Rule number three, Allow the immediate family to decide what they would like to do with the deceased person's social media account. All of the accounts. I want to give a major eye roll to this rule right here because that is absolutely something people should think about before they make changes to social media accounts. <laughs> Saw the eye roll. May or may, may or may not have a personal experience with this. You have a couple of rules and each social media platform has different rules as far as taking down the deceased person's social media account. If you are not in the immediate family, that is not your decision to make. And from right. what I understand, just a little bit, you can memorialize it, you can take it down completely, or you can leave it up. But it's still the immediate family's decision to make what they want to do with that account. Correct. I just, I, first of all, I didn't even know the memorializing of a, someone's page was a thing until Donovan's page was memorialized without my knowledge or my permission. Um, and what that means is that page will never come down, but also, which I'm, I'm thankful for that, but also no one could ever like become friends with him from this point on. So at the time Donovan passed away, the, uh, Jordan was little. He didn't have a Facebook account. Jordan is now 16 years old. He does have a Facebook account. If we were allowed to remain in charge of Donovan's Facebook, Jordan would be able to be Donovan's Facebook friend. In addition, Kayla, his sister, um, forgot her password to her initial account. So when she had to create a new one, she lost Donovan as a friend. These are things people don't think about when they take it upon themselves to make pages to someone's social media without the family's permission. And I'm so glad you're mentioning that. And I can tell that it's still an area of contention in your heart. That's a little heartstring that's still pulling there. But also that we would have never known it had we not experienced it, right? And so Correct. letting other yeah. people know. The, the other thing I think is so important, Erica, is that you as the griever in the immediate family, don't make any decisions right away. Right. You take down a page or memorialize it, and it wasn't the right decision for you because you do it in rush, rush and haste at that moment. 
Yeah, that is so true. Anything done in the weeks or months, you know, following is, is you should not make any rash decisions because you're just flying on emotion. And, and sometimes, you know, it, it's every day is a new emotion so that's why you know you should not trust yourself to make any major major decisions such such as those in those immediate uh, weeks following rule number four if you the griever decide to post every day from now until eternity about your loved one that is your choice your friends can choose to block you and that is their choice you know rule number four seems a little harsh <laughs> <laughs> everybody block everybody but, but it needs it to be is, understood. It is true because, you know, even though you are feeling the emotional aspects of the anniversaries and birthdays and, you know, special days that follow um, in the wake of your loss, and, and this, this applies to breakups, you know, breakups of romantic relationships. Over time, people who have not experienced that directly get a little tired of seeing the sad monotonous posts you know and so it's it's okay and you should not take it personal if people decide for themselves you know what i'm a little i'm good on this uh heartbreak roller coaster i'm gonna take my exit here and maybe you know come back at another time you should not take it personal you should understand your choice to put every Thing you want out there is, is yours alone and it's their choice to say they don't want to be a part of that. What was your personal take on that? I was always so sensitive about doing post overload. So that was one of my fears in the back of my mind like oh my god people are probably getting so sick of seeing these sad things for me that I tried to keep it to when it was like I really had something important to say. So I worked with a client whose husband passed away, and I distinctly remember about month three, she was posting about how much she was missing her husband. Now, also, she had pretty much posted consecutively many times, and it was barely month three, and someone came on and said, shouldn't you be over this by now? Which I was right. like, oh! And yeah. she said, if you don't like it, uh, unfriend me or whatever, or something to that effect. We don't have the right to say that. Sometimes, even though like for your choice, you chose that the social media platform wasn't an outlet for you or it wasn't right day to day, some people, that's their outlet. And we need to be okay with that because something that they're saying is gonna help someone else, number one. Number two, we need to yeah. talk about grief and pain. It is okay. And social media is a great place to do that. Mm-hmm. That is true. That is true. Number five, check in with your grievers often, whether through social media, phone, or text. It is so important. You know, it's so easy when you are, you know, the initial thing happens, right? So you're there, you got the people calling, you have, I mean, we had food for days. I, I, after Austin died, I remember we had a table that was just bread items. <laughs> it was all carbs. Um, you know, but then you go into week three, week four, and people, the out-of-town travelers have gone home. The, you know, day-to-day -day drop by, people have, have stopped dropping by. And then there's, like, radio silence, which is deafening to a griever. Yeah. Yeah. And that way, social media really helps because you can just send a little text. You can send a little post. Hey, I'm thinking about yeah. you today. Hey, I got up. And I heard some birds singing outside and it reminded me of you. I remember exactly. when Donovan and I did this, and I wanted to share that with you today. Here's a great picture that came up in my memory of Donovan doing this. Also, there's a you know, oh, hold on. Sorry, I was just going to say, sometimes, though, also, with those memories that pop up, it's, it's nice to, to share because it's, you know, the person, the griever, whoever is, is, you know, is not part of every single aspect, aspect of their loved one's life. So, you know, to see different parts of them doing different things, it's, you know, it's nice from time to time. There's a lot of things that can be said when someone posts their story or they're having a bad day or they post that they've lost a loved one. A lot of people say they, that the I'm sorry for your loss is starting to become very cliche. 
and they don't want to hear it. I also uh, recently saw a post where a person said, don't tell me I'm sorry. Don't tell me you're sorry. My mother was the best thing that ever happened to me. So there's also that. So I wanted to give some other things that we can say that will just let grievers know that we're here for them. Do say there are no words. There are no words. Do say if I were near you, I'd give you a hug right now. Do say I can't imagine what this experience must be like for you right now. My heart is breaking for you. My heart is breaking with yours. Those are such helpful words that you can say. There's also the dreaded what not to say that goes along with that. And you and I know those uh, little tidbits very well, right? Yeah. Do not say, I don't know how you feel. I know how you feel. It's like one of the worst things that you can say. I know how you feel. When you tell someone you know how they feel, you absolutely is disrespectful and you're taking away their grief. You know what I mean? You're yeah. just really just pulling it away from them. Yeah. I know how you feel because my dog just died. <laughs> that one always cracks me up. You, uh, you'll get over this soon. Just give it some time. Hang yeah, in there, girl. You'll be fine. Oh, yeah, yeah. Keep your head up. <laughs> be strong. <laughs> yeah, we have to laugh because sometimes we don't really hear the words that are coming out of our mouth. Hello, my friends. I just want to let you know, thank you so much for joining us for this 15 minutes of social media do's and don'ts. These are just Eric and our opinion of our experience of what has happened to us over time. We understand there's a little uh, disconnect here. There was a little pause. Erica's in Dallas, Texas, and I'm here in L.A. But we felt this message was so important. We recorded it to get it out to you anyway. We want to say thank you for this 15 minutes. Thank you so much for joining us. As hopefully we'll get this uh, technology issue resolved and come back stronger in the next one. How about that? You can find us at www.healingstartswiththeheart.com. Thank you. Bye.